Hello. I'm new to lot picking. It's something I wanted to do for. Oh my word! How did that open so quickly? <laughs> I didn't expect that one at all. Let's go again. It's not that easy. Cut. As I was saying, I'm new to lot picking. It's something I've wanted to do for a long, long time. Because I like tinkering and playing around with things. And so I thought I'd share with you today my top 10 tips for newbie lock pickers. And hopefully they'll be useful to you and also save you a few quid in the process. And that's the point where this is supposed to pop open like magic. Oh God, I could be at this for ages. So my first tip would be decide what type of lock you want to pick first. There's so many different types of locks out there. There's combination locks. There's these padlocks that go on gates, etc. And your valuables. Euro locks, wafer locks. The list goes on and on. And you can buy a set of picking tools which is in tune with the type of lock that you want to pick. My next tip for you all is all the gear and no idea. So don't do what I did. If you're new to this, you go on Amazon and you see things and you think, oh, lock picking tools. Next thing you know, you bought yourself the set. And then I bought myself some of these comb tools here, which I've since found out are um, pretty much useless for a lot of locks. And then we've got a load of rakes. So you can see all the... Oh, I've got these as well. You can see all the things that... Uh, oh, what's this? Um, I've forgotten what this is. I think this is top keyway keys. Yeah. So, oh, and I've got another set there. That's a nice set, that Southord. So what I'm saying to you is... Oh, I bought these as well. Hang on. When you go online, these are for going in between gaps in doors etc and lifting up catches and getting behind i think they're mortise catches it's like what what was i thinking of oh some more there so what i'm saying to you good people is save yourself a shed loads of money and only buy what you absolutely need starting out my next tip for you would be buy some quality gear and when i say quality gear i mean quality gear that's not over expensive you don't have to buy a lot of it i've gone a bit mad here with this south Ord set this is the um it's for euro locks 2010 I've got a lovely selection. I don't need all these in reality, you know. All I probably want is a couple of these key tensioners, a couple of little rakes, and maybe a, a couple of single picking tools. So that, that's all you'd need. But I found it quite economically viable just to buy a complete set. You can kind of buy all this sort of stuff from Amazon. Your quality, though, is just not there. It's more gimmicky than what it is useful. I wanted to explain a little bit more about quality. And when I say quality, paying a little bit more money for something like this, you'd expect the steel to be better. And also... If you look at the curvedness of that, the thinness of the steel, it's completely different to this. And if you look at the thickness, the width, there's a massive difference again. We've got softer edges. And there's nothing wrong with this edge. It's just you can tell it's been pressed out and there's no finishing on it. So what I'm trying to say is for someone like me or maybe you as a newbie lock picker, you want to give yourself every chance possible 
to start on opening a few locks so with something that's tried and tested you know if you're not doing very well it's nothing to do with the tool it's to do with your own abilities so now we've got tools sorted out we're down to what locks do we need to buy well i'll tell you what i've done you people with more experience out there if you think this is wrong or you've got better ideas just let us know in the comments my train of thought was get one of these acrylic see-through locks they're not very expensive they're only a few quid and then try and pick it and then i've got a visual of what's happening and i've also got an idea of what it's like what the sense of touch is as well so as much as i like to look online and read all about this until you actually try it yourself you don't really have a true idea of what it's all about so i found that useful i also bought this little cheap lock for about two pound forty that you've seen i'm making a point if i do buy them is getting them with keyways that you know they've got more of a rise and fall in the pins in them rather than this being all even because that would give me more of a challenge bought this little thing here as well i've forgotten where i bought this but it's it's a smaller size it's made of brass and it's made better so that should give me a good little challenge as well euro lock i think i've replaced this on my house somewhere and just had it lying about so that's a good way to get things if you've got any you know any friends you know you've got a few of these are lying about in their sheds or whatever or you know you just ask them i'm sure they'd be quite happy to get rid of them and maybe that's a good way of getting some bits to play around with so you don't have to spend a massive amount of money i also got this well i didn't buy it i've had it for ages i've got a few of these little combination locks about that i put on a suitcase etc and that's why i bought the um decoding keys there's two in here i'm forever forgetting you know the combination on these and we end up checking them out so i thought if i could learn how to do this as well that'd be really useful oh i've forgotten the key code that's all right i'll spend 10 minutes i'll sort it out and save myself a couple of quid so I don't have to buy another one and the last one i've got this wasn't very expensive either black spur yeah you can tell that's quality can't you this is a different type of lock altogether so i think the snowman keys that i've got in that south Ord set will fit this when i say the snowman keys i'll get them out there's like a ball and there we go right so i think that these will work in there now being a complete novice i could be completely wrong but that's called a snowman for obvious reasons uh, i don't know if that's a headless snowman or a bodiless snowman you can tell i'm new to this but i'll probably give those a go as well and that's it i'm going to keep working away at these until i'm reasonably proficient at opening them all and then if i come across anything for free i don't know in the skip if i'm going down the local tip and i see someone chucking them out or something i'll just say do you mind if i have that you know and um we go from there if you got any other ideas on practice locks let me know in the comments we're up to number five already and this one i think you're gonna like i was working away as you do being a newbie and before you knew it i had this great big blister on my finger and it was like oh for goodness sake and it hurt like hell so what i've 
heard is that you can get some shrink wrap and go over your pick and, and that will take the edge off and I thought well, that was quite a good idea and then I looked at me set and I'm thinking hang on can I be bothered to put shrink wrap on everything so I've got one two three four five you get you get the idea I've got all these I'll be there forever so what I found was um, I've got a piece of inner tube off a bicycle this is like um, a racer, you know, one of those fast things. And I worked out that if I slid the inner tube over my finger, that gives me a nice protective cover for my finger so that the edge of this doesn't dig in. And it's working an absolute treat. So if you can't be bothered coating everything with bits of shrink wrap then um, if you're as lazy as me um, this works like an absolute dream my next tip for you is be patient we can't all be the lock picking lawyer or lock noob or whatever else you watch on YouTube because life's not like that you wouldn't go kicking the ball round a field and expect to be like messy within 10 minutes would you no you wouldn't so that's the approach i'm taking this is just a bit of fun something to keep my mind occupied i'm not going to take it overly seriously and i like a challenge so top tip for you just be patient my next tip for you is don't be frightened to experiment I'm sure for something like this you're supposed to have a certain size of tension wrench but I just don't care. I've experimented with different sizes and I'm working out what works, what doesn't. I've also enjoyed doing a bit of raking. That's where I've had my most of my success. And I'm enjoying the single lock picking just to find out what it actually feels like. And uh, do you know what? I actually did single pick this on one occasion and it popped open and I thought, do you know what? I've mastered it all now. I'm a lock picker now. Yeah, how wrong I was. I've not been able to manage to do it again. <laughs> but that's part of the thing. It's like a therapy. So don't be frightened to experiment. Before I started buying tools for this new hobby and locks, etc., when I was doing a load of research uh, time and time again, the word tensioning came up where people are saying, you know, you've got to keep an eye on your tensioning. You've got to be really gentle and understand how much tension that you're putting on there. And I thought, yeah, whatever. You just press it down, stick your thing in there, jab it around and it flies open. It's not like that. You need a certain amount of tension to bind pins that you've pushed out of the way. But too much tension seizes the whole thing up. So understanding tensioning and paying attention to how it feels is a very big part of this. My next tip for you is once you've popped a lock open, try and remember what you did to pop it open. Because you're like, I was so excited when I popped these open. I kind of forget, what did I do? What was the process that happened in there? What? How did I do this? So I think by doing that, trying to remember what you did and recreate that time and time again would make you, or in my case me, a much better lock picker. <laughs> I couldn't have timed that any better. My last tip for you is don't practice for too long. And you might be saying, how long is too long? Well, in answer to that, in this short time I've been doing this and my experience, I'll come out here, I'm out of the way, 10 minutes. If I'm starting to get frustrated, and when I say frustrated, if I can't get, say, a lock to open, I end up and I'm pressing harder and then I'm jabbing around harder with the pick and I'm going in harder. And all I'm going to do is break something. So that's the time to walk away. 
so if you're doing this for 10 minutes you're popping things open and things are working then stay a bit longer but know when the time is to walk away and for me that's going to be in about 30 seconds <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it i hope this has been useful to you me sharing my experiences of being a novice lock picker and i shall continue to work on all these and try and find the best ways of opening them and i'll share with you my findings as i go along from time to time thanks for watching i'll see you next time Info shed out.